Where are we? Are we here? We're here. Hello, everyone. I'm Zeos Pantera, your host of In Ear Fetish. And this is a first for this channel. I've hinted at it coming around. But we're here. This is Mark Your Calendars. Well, I'll mark mine and you'll be a few days later, unless you're a patron. This is the day Zeos has to put something in the title that indicates an IEM is USB only because that is going to be a future thing from now on. And I know some of you are going, ah, my amps. But we got to talk about MEMS because this is the Xeno. Well, these, hold on, we yanked them out of my ear holes. These are Xeno. And they were sent to me by Hibby. In fact, full disclosure, they were sent to me before um, SoCal Can Jam. Uh, so that I could, they, they, they paid me to promote them at SoCal Can Jam. And I put them on my table with Eris. And did you, any of you who were there notice me promoting these? No, because the first set they sent me bricked itself. And I say bricked because I updated the firmware, but it didn't really brick itself as much as it made all the amplification go to the right-hand channel and scream at you. Um, so yeah, no, not a great start. And so they immediately rushed ship me a second one because there is... It's not currently launched, or I can't find it right now. But there currently is a crowdfunding campaign for this. So now I have to make a moral decision to review this, knowing full well that basically Hibby threw me a little bit of money and said, here, promote this at SoCal, which I'm thankful for. But then all I could actually promote at uh, SoCal was the Hibby Evangelion R4, which will get its own review on the main channel. If you don't know, this is the second, this is a fifth, fifth channel, sixth. Someone at SoCal Can Jam, which, by the way, the footage is on the main channel, the Z Reviews channel. First time ever, another first, someone at SoCal said, hey, you're in your fetish. Not Z Reviews. You're not Zeos. You're, you're in your fetish. And I was like, wow, I haven't felt this since I started the channel. So, like, someone knew me only from this channel. So that person, hello, go check out Z Reviews. Didn't even know what Z Reviews was. So, I have to mention that every now and then. So, I will do a full cognitive, cognitive amazing review of this thing, just for its quirks and features. Um, but for now, we're going to talk about Xeno, and I've got to give you all a warning. This is going to be a very, very two-part. Oh, by the way, you like my clipboard? This is also a first for this. It's going to be appearing in every video from now on, because sometimes I just need to remember things. Like that I'll be attending Capital Audio Fest to show off Eris, which is my headphone. I know it's not I am related, but... Uh, New York Can Jam, I should be giving a actual, uh, not a speech, but what the hell is those things? A panel. I'll be hosting a panel by myself. And I will be at Expona showing off not just a headphone and not just the wire, but also maybe an amplifier. We'll see. We'll see how things get going. So anyway, back to Zeno. This has the vibes of something that should not be on sale. And that's why they're doing crowdfunding, because let me put it... The worst microphonics I've ever seen. The stiffest wire, because which causes the worst microphonics. The control is a little bit jank, but I'm sure with the softer wire that would fix it. They don't fit in my ears and I have to bend them. I actually don't put them over my ears because I have to just shove them in or else they'll fall out. And, it, uh, well, well, that's it. That's the, those are the negatives. These sound amazing. And thanks to the R4 and the fucking $2,000 R8... I don't think I would trust anyone more with mobile audio now than Hibby. That's it. They're the only ones I trust. If you want to know how advanced a set of these I got, by the way, here's what they came with. They came with tips. And then apparently Hibby makes some waveguide tube liquid silicone ear tips, which are extremely nice. They kind of remind me of X Elastics. And this was the case that contained Xeno. So when you're wondering how advanced a set, this was not the retail packaging. Let's look at it. So you get, excuse me, I'm going to unplug. You get a USB-C plug, which is actually pretty small and nice. And you get the stiff wire. I call it the stiff wire because it's very stiff. And this stiff wire goes yay long to this. The most engineer made it least sexy box you've ever goddamn seen here's your microphone here you get positive and negative even though when you go like this it looks like x and i it's one of those it's like this in, a, in the best way possible this feels like something designed for like an xbox 360 
like an add-on module for it. It's got the X and it's got the plus and the minus, but then you know, the plus and the minus, the plus, the plus lines up this way, but the minus is diagonal. So to make the minus correct, you gotta do that and then it's an X. And then if you do this, it's an X and an I. And there's an O, there's an O on there. And that's to change modes. And this is to play pause and there's an LED that tells you what mode you're in and I can't do it because it's not plugged in. And oh my God, is those also fabric? Not as stiff. These are actually not bad. Microphonic as fuck. It's, it's like sandpaper against your shirt. I'm telling you this because we need to crowdfund them to change it. All right? They won't do anything if we don't support them. And they're not going to be very expensive either. These are going to be pretty entry level. They they gave me rough prices, but the, I don't want to say it in case it changes. So I'll link you to that one, and I'll try to link you to specifically the crowdfunding page if it's up and running. Um, here's the thing. These have problems. Just just what I've shown you already with... Can I get this to stand up like that? Just what I've shown you already with like this... Because this is not just an audio cable. This is an audio and a data cable. Actually, it's just a straight data cable. And this is not it, fam. Like, this is not it, fam. You could bend it and like make a zigzag and it just stays like that. So this is not it, fam. But if you were to ignore it, like I have had to sit here and plug this into... Ooh, plug this into my phone... And tell it that I don't want... Actually, I could tell it I do want the Hibby app to control it. But I'm not. I'm going to use FUBAR still. Um, you plug it into your phone. Or your DAP. I could plug it into that if I wanted to. This thing comes on. little red light indicating it has power. I have render tips on it because I'm having a hard time getting these... In other words, like, this curve is not finalized. It was in a plastic bag. So I tried heating these up and bending them and try to get them to fit over my ear. But these are these are too, these are too stiff. These are too stiff. You can't modify them enough to get them comfortable. So I'm just jamming them in my ears like this, like old school earbuds. See if I can do this and still film it. I have enough flexibility on this camera, I think, to go like, I mean, we could do that. That's as low as it'll go. That's nose cam. That's like, that's like the worst porno angle ever. So you get this son of a bitch here. And you know what? I clown in it a lot. But when it's hanging here and not twisting around, just due to the, like, like I can grab, like, two feet down and just manipulate the twist and angle of where this thing is sitting, which can be an issue. But when it isn't doing that and you just reach for it, it's very natural to know that, like, okay, this is volume down, this here is volume up, and this is play pause, or this is next track, last track, or this is next track, last track. So you press that silver one once. Lucas Stracagnoli starts playing from The Last of the Mohicans. And you see we have a blue light now. If we pause it, I think it'll eventually go red. Yeah, it goes red to say that it's turned off the amplifiers. Again, designed by an engineer, a sound engineer, not someone who's used to, like, making things comfortable. and Not, not Antonio Meze, who's making these beautiful organic headphones. This is like, hey, I make Project. Please support projects so we can make for future things go. Oh, I have to explain MEMS drivers to you as well. MEMS is important because MEMS is going to be in fucking everything in a matter of like, actually, it's probably happening now because I saw a bunch at SoCal. But let's back to this for a hot, a hot second. Play pause and then you double click and then it's next track. But uh, if you triple click, it's still next track and then pause. So there's no triple click. But then if you hold positive... Oh, wait, that's volume up, which doesn't indicate here. It is a separate volume control on the phone versus this. So I could press this down, and eventually starts blinking. If I press it once, at one, two, three, four, five, six. But it's still going louder. It's not indicating it's maxed out. It just blinks six fucking times when you press it. Again, please support them on their Kickstarter to get this thing working. These gets insanely loud. So, and... Like I said, Hibby is the one you want to go to if you're going for, like, portable amplification. So now they're grouping it into a thing with horrible things around it. But double tap that. Oh, no, hold that. That's restarted it. Hold that. That's next track. Oh, fuck. All right. So. This button here is to switch modes. There's three modes currently, and I dropped it. We hit this button, and you get yellow, one flash. It says, yeah, yellow, one flash. 
is your own personal EQ. Your PEQ, you could do a um, adjustment. I don't think the app is ready currently to do personal EQs, but you will have that ability. So it's either Hi-Fi audio file or PEQ is one blink yellow. Press it again, you get two blinks orange. That is the smoothing bass boosting level. And you press it again, and it's three blinks of purple, which is what I am preferring mostly, which is actually using the MEMS. All right, we got to talk about MEMS. Where is this thing about MEMS? Where the hell is my camera? We're pointing the camera correctly? Good. So, um, you know when you have a phone, and you pick it up, and you, like, wiggle it around, and it's got a compass on it, and it's got an accelerometer and everything? All of those things that your phone can do where it senses the world, that's MEMS which stands for echo. What does MEMS stand for? This is gonna the word be... MEM is a possessive term that indicates ownership or association. It is derived from the word MEMS, which means mind or faculty. Therefore, MEMS stands for the mind or faculty of men, or, in other words, the qualities and characteristics associated with masculinity. Absolutely not the answer I wanted, but now we know that one too. Anyway, MEMS are these fucking things. Zoom. Zoom. So these are, I'm pretty sure that this is like one millimeter. Pretty sure that's like, that's how small that is. Not 100%. MEMS is a solid state. Wow, that went over there. All right. MEMS is essentially a solid state. How do you describe MEMS? I've had the MEMS representative, like, speaking to... I'm going to drink more coffee. I'm having coffee during this. This is the coffee day. Mm. I want to point out that just turning my head is causing these wires to rub up against my, sh my, my face. And the microphonics are destructive. All right. Here's how it is. We've had dynamics. We've had planar. We've had electrostat. We've had... Uh, bone conduction. We've done all these things inside of IMs. And what MEMS are is taking the things that we've had for years that are very, very small solid state things and using them to move air. It's a solid state door, essentially. It's just a door. And what it does is when the door opens and closes, and there's probably five dozen of these things in there, it moves 150 times faster than a regular driver could move. Because accelerometers and all these other fucking things that measure magnetic north, those are very small, essentially nano machines that are just detecting everything. So this is instead of detecting, it's producing. They're using MEMS backwards. And this has been a thing that they're trying to integrate for the last like three or four years. I've seen the MEMS representative. I, I, there's a video of me at New York Can Jam wearing MEMS stuff, which was like, at the time, just like the barest minimum of, minimum of shit. The problem with MEMS is it is a circuit component. It's not just a driver like an electrostat or a fucking planar. It needs 10 volts to operate, which shit actually made a special amplifier so that you could plug in an amp just like normal and use it, but no one's going to do that. So the, the reason that this is going to be the first video that indicates a USB-C IM is because anything that wants to use this new MEMS tech or old MEMS tech that's repurposed to do this, is going to have to be either true wireless with a battery, and they could dictate voltage, they could dictate what it's doing, or USB only. And you're going to have to accept that, because it's going to become... If what I'm hearing is the literal plastic bag, you know, this is the first of the first... This is going to be in every high-end IM. They're going to give up on doing, oh, I mixed planars, electric set. They're going to go with what this has, a single dynamic, which is a uh, graphene. They're using a graphene 10 millimeter dynamic. So automatically a good start. I'm a big fan of just single dynamic drivers. But then they're smashing it in there with a whole array of fucking graphene, of uh, MEMS drivers to do the high end. So I want you to picture this. You now have a 10 millimeter which can do all the low end, all the things, the only things you want. And now you've got these li this little cluster of the fastest, most accurate uh, high pr highs producing. Like, they tried to do one that was just straight MEMS to do bass to. 
And it can be done. You just need so many of them, it comes cost prohibitive. Because you need to move air in large quantities for base. So what we've got here with the single dynamic and then a cluster, I don't know how many exactly it's, I wish it told me how many. That's, this is the ticket. This is why I'm believing in this is going to happen. Because I'm shitting on the wire and the control box is kind of weird and ugly and they're not very comfortable and they're going to have to work out the thing. But holy shit, when I play music. On that triple purple, like, <laughs> this is straight, like, I'm going to pause over there. This is unique melody messed levels of, like, detail and accuracy in what's going to probably be, and I'll just estimate the cost, at under $200. Because it's 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 no longer in the realm of, oh, I need a good DAC amp, even though this does have high-grade ES9018 CM2 end drivers. This is a digitally corrected 10-volt amplified fucking test experiment. And this is crazy. Because now Hibby is also responsible for the equalization between the big bass driver and the little fucking mems. So the, they're able to switch between the three modes of like, well, we have it so that there's more bass and less mems. We have it so it's like an equal balance of neutrality. And then we've got it where the mems are shining, which is the mode I have it in right now. And it's like, this is... I wish you could... It's Grandmaster Flash, so it's just like... Here, wait. We can just unplug this. Like that, that noise through MEMS, it's like, oh, holy fuck. I, I want a hearing aid that I could wear 24 hours a day, seven days a week with MEMS drivers in it, just so I could hear treble better than I normally can. Because it just pushes, cancel that. It pushes sound in a way that it doesn't even feel real. It will be like walking into a, a showroom for televisions and like, 1997 where there's a bunch of crt tvs and you just have a 4k television sitting there running like a digital source of a blu-ray and you're like um what the fuck is that like that's the level of like what the fuck is that that's these ims are producing with highs the highs are abnormally clear Th that's it they're abnormally clear highs i wouldn't give this praise and the thing is, when I was at SoCal, I did see two or three different um, resellers that were pushing USB only IMs that were trying to incorporate MEMS. Everyone's in a mad rush right now. If you're watching this right now on YouTube and you look, you will find a handful, five, five. Fio has a set with of true wireless with MEMS in it. Now, here's the thing. Before I continue and say, oh, MEMS has fixed everything. The world is great. It's still about implementation. Just because you have an IEM with 19 different advanced features doesn't mean it's going to be good. It doesn't automatically fix everything. But my fucking God, this is like introducing computerized aerodynamics to Formula One. All right? It's like, yeah, we could figure out. We could put a bunch of fins on it. Maybe it'll do something. Or you throw it in a simulation model and you let it hammer for 19 hours and go, here's perfect. So you're still going to need the companies to figure out how they want to use it, how they want to implement it, and how they want to tune it. Having the PEQ, when we can adjust the PEQ settings to this thing, and I can get in there and actually balance and do the right curves for what I want, because the bass is hilariously dumb. Or you hook the switch and the bass is pretty neutral. And the treble is either reduced and rolled off for like the double orange, which is supposed to be like the bass emphasis one, which I would probably listen to on long journeys but then i hit the button triple purple flash and it's like oh fuck mems can do this let's go to the good song yeah there you go i unplugged it so it lowered the volume oh i held it down you gotta press it over and over and over it does forget when you unplug it what your volume was at and also what mode you're in There's an audience screaming, what the fuck? These IMs, as much as I despise how they feel, because I have to wear them without it. By the way, I'm using render tips to get them to stick and just to give me, trap me in there with that. Despite all of this, the structural build of it, the soul of it is fucking amazing. I think they're, 
one of the best test examples of what MEMS can do that I've ever heard, including listening to the one that the MEMS guy himself was trying to sell off. Because again, who the fuck do I trust more with my portable audio than Hibby? They're weebs. I need weebs in my life to tell me what things sound good. Right, lady? Right. I think she's AI, by the way. I apologize. How many fingers has she got? It's the right amount, but they don't look right. Like, ah, uh, this is an... Even if you don't plan to use these out and you're into IEMs, if you're an IEM person, which I'm assuming since you're subscribed to Inner Fetish, you made it this far into this video about this fucking IEM, I'm assuming you're an IEM person. Um, at the time of this recording, there's only a handful of examples of this, and I guarantee you most of them are more expensive. Pick this setup, or at least support it, or at least tell somebody else about it. Because if you hear it, if you get to hear what the MEMS do, and you come to a, a, a gentle understanding of, okay, the future may concern us all plugging in a digital power to a unit that has a box or a thing in line or something in the... To, to play, if you if you accept that, and you want to know what the future sounds like, fucking these, fucking these. Obviously, this particular set needs a lot of work to make it like, oh, my daily driver is this. We're not there yet. They need to work on. I mean, they they're talking about how how light and easy it is to like carry around, but it's like I'd rather have them just shaped like a normal I am, the right size. We're gonna have a lot of problems with people. Uh, because they're not going to have detachable wires. Because you don't need two connectors for this. You need, like, I don't know how many are going here. Six? You need power. You need signal source. It's all the processing's done in here. This is going to change IMs for a fucking ever. I'm sure somebody out there who's thinking right now will be selling little plug-in boxes to go into your phone. That you can plug in the power filter, the thing. IFI actually sells something like that already. But this is the next generation of IM shit. It, it it has gotten not stale and repetitive, but people are doing like, we got two planars and one dynamic. We've got nine dynamics and this fucking single. And it's like, okay, what's next? What's the next big thing? And MEMS will be the next big thing. Because once you're going MEMS, then that like the Dusk 2 that I shit all over because I could unplug it, but then I plugged it in and it sounded great. Or the original Intuaras where they came with their DSP adapters. Once you're plugging in with a USB then all the tuning can also be supported. The physical tuning can also be supported by DSP. And it's just going to be... It's going to be not the Wild West. It's going to be like Sequest DSV, where everything becomes hyper-futuristic. And companies are building the IEMs and doing the chambers, and they're going back, and they're, they're redoing the DSP and then changing the physical case, and, and then the MEMS drivers are being moved or multiplied. These shouldn't sound as good as they do. And I wish I could give them a wholehearted recommendation because, oh, the wire is nice and the box doesn't bother me or spin around randomly because of how stiff the wire is. Can I, can I, can I spin it around from here? Hold on. Well, it's on a desk. Uh, uh, oh, it's transferring the motion. There it goes. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it almost got it. There you go. It's just, there is issues with this particular one. But this is also a very advanced plastic bag model. And if they can pull off what I think they're trying to pull off, and people are accepting of it. Because that's the thing. It doesn't matter if I like it and I accept it because I'm going to have a hundred of these things to do in the next four years. It matters if one of you is accepted of it. Just one. By the way, the maximum SPL is 116. Five grams each, silver plated, OFC wire material, which I guess matters. Like it's power. Like it just needs power and audio signal up to that. And then it does processing. And then it's analog out to there. Well, it's analog out to here from the, for the dynamic, but it's going to be MEMS power up to there. From the, it's, I don't know where we're going with this. I, this is my first. This is my first. This is your first. This is our first. I'll get that FIO one. I'll figure out what other company had it. I saw it was a beautiful box. The other was in probably $600 for that one. But I saw at least one more company at SoCal that had and was showing off a MEMS IAM. And then I think we all have to just prepare ourselves for it because I'm not against it. I have all these amplifiers on the desk. They're all ready and warmed up because I'm going to do another review after this that's not going to be something that plugs in off my phone. And that one's going to require, it's going to have different sound signatures. Oh, this or the R2R version of it. 
And that's tradition. But, you know, I just watched the Tecmo on boomboxes. And I couldn't help but think. Because he's like, oh, boombox has to have, uh, it used to be a cassette player. But now no one, like no one uses cassettes except for Fio. And though he's, he limited himself to only using ones with CD player in it. But he's right. He said at the end of the video, in another two years, no one's going to include a CD player in a boombox. And what you're left with is just a fucking plethora of Bluetooth speakers. But I've listened to some of those Bluetooth speakers. The Tribots, Tribit Stormbox Blast sounds fucking amazing. And it's just a handle and Bluetooth. And that's what this is going to be. This, at some point, will replace the archaic idea of plugging into an amplifier and having a separate DAC. It's just going to be, well, plug it in and it's all perfect. It's perfect for itself. You don't like the way it sounds? Go in here, go to the app and adjust it for your fucking settings and then it's perfect for you then. All they got to do is get the physicality right, which they need to work on. So yeah, I'm done. Thank you to uh, Hibby for sponsoring me out to SoCal Kanjam. I apologize for not being able to actually uh, show off what you want. Instead, I used this and the Hibby RS2 as my daps for the entire event for people who wanted to listen to music. It's got a handle. It's got a fucking handle. Um, wallpaper in the wallpaper hoard. Uh, yeah. The uh, You know what? Send me more of these tips. Because they don't work on this. They didn't grip my ear holes hard enough. But I think these will work in the future, and they're really fucking nice. So yeah, thank you to Hibby for entrusting me with what essentially is a, a, a working test model. But uh, we'll see how far MEMS goes in your collection, because there's going to be a time, trust me, there's going to be a time when this is like the main thing. It's either going to be here or in True Wireless, which True Wireless are already a thing. You know, asking anyone who's got an AirPod, They've already got the capability to just... If Apple supported MEMS, I would actually take Apple seriously. Because that means they're actually looking for something better. So let's hope that never happens. Anyway, Patreon subscribes to support this channel. I want to thank everyone who does that. Uh, wallpapers and check out my main channel. For those people who don't know, this is this is a side channel. Even though you might be here just for IMs. There's Z Reviews. And there's also Z's Checking Channel. And the Unboxing Channel. And... I guess the cooking channel, but I don't really pop just on the cooking channel anymore because I stream twice a week on Twitch. Uh, I'm done. You're done. We're done. Mouse pads available on Reddit on RZO. So there's a big post that used to have all these. I, I wish, I wish, I wish upon a fish. This wire was just less the way it is and microphonic and everything, but I'll take it, support them and ask them to make it better. <laughs>